Hi everyone, my name is David and today I'm going to be talking to you about how you can get the most out of your open search ingestion. So in particular for our analytics and our observability users, you guys are ingesting tons of data. I mean on the scale of terabytes a day. And you want to make sure you're doing so in a cost effective and efficient manner, right? So if there was a magic button that you could press and suddenly be ingesting documents more cost effectively and more efficiently, you'd want to know about it, right? My name's David. I'm a senior developer advocate working on open source open search at AWS. And today I'm going to be telling you about that very button. With that, let's talk about how open search does replication out of the box. Our default is to use document replication. Here's how document replication works. We take a document, that document gets ingested back into our primary shard. Our primary shard ingests that into our leucine segments, which for those who don't know, leucine segments, that is our collection of documents uh, that have been ingested into reverse indexes. Then after it's ingested it back into the leucine segments, it's actually gonna send the original document across the network to our replicas. Then those replicas are going to do the exact same work that the primary shard did and ingest back to their own leucine segments. And that's our fourth step. So for those who are paying close attention, you might see what's going on here. We are duplicating the work that our primary shard is doing on all of our replicas. Now it turns out this is really good if you want to have near real time consistency on your replicas. However, for our analytics and our observability users, that's not necessarily necessary. You guys probably only are using about one, maybe two replicas, and you don't need that almost instant consistency. As a result, we created segment replication. And we'll talk about how this is a little bit different. Awesome. So segment replication works in a very similar manner. Our document comes into the primary shard. That's our first step. That primary shard still ingests it back to leucine segments. And that's our second step. And here's where we do something pretty clever. We take and instead of sending the original document now, we're going to send the materialized leucine segments across the network to our replicas, thereby skipping the need for the replicas to re-ingest that. And this is going to happen after a refresh interval. That is a time period that you can set. Um, it defaults to one second. And this is really cool. Now it, it comes at a bit of a trade-off, right? If you are sending to multiple replicas, um, you might actually find that to be less efficient because this is going to take a lot more network bandwidth, right? These leucine segments are going to be much larger than the original documents. Um, so you need more bandwidth in between your nodes to do this. Again, though, for our observability and our analytics users, if you only have about one replica or two replicas, you're going to be doing all right. The other thing you need to be sh careful about is making sure you have your primary shards evenly distributed. That way you don't end up with a hot node that's doing all of your ingestion, right? Then you have unused compute on all of your replicas. Now you probably want to know how to get going with this and it's very straightforward. All you have to do is create your new index with the replication.type set to segment. And it does have to be on a new index. So if you have templates and you're rolling over your indexes day over day, you can get start trying this as soon as tomorrow. Um, otherwise, you'll need to migrate your index over into one that has segment replication enabled. With that, I hope you enjoy your reduced CPU utilization across your cluster. My name's David, and I'll catch you next time.